Rachel, an evolutionary perspective has given um, not only the biological sciences, but even the social sciences, a r radically new framework to think about things. Um, when we look at the social development of, the, of, of uh, Homo sapiens and the human species, what are some of the uh, big principles of evolution that can take us from um, hunter-gatherers to the incredibly complex society we have today? The question of what took human beings from a million years plus spent in a hunter-gatherer lifestyle <laughs> to these extraordinarily complex, differentiated, uh, gigantic, anonymous societies uh, that we live in today is really the million dollar question that there are no super good answers for. Um, and so, you know, I mean, culture itself is now, you know, now widely conceived sort of as a biological phenomenon. You know, historically, people like to, to juxtapose or, or contrast really you know, culture versus biology, like somehow, right, right. And, and maybe some people would have argued, oh, biology is like the real essential stuff of human nature and culture is just an add on uh, on top of it that's trying to make it make the best with what it can. Um, I think that th that view is sort of largely out of fashion. And I think that people take culture very seriously as an evolutionary exponentum. And I think that we've seen a lot of evidence for culture in non-human animals again, sort of stressing that this is a deeply biological phenomenon. It's a way of transmitting information and guiding the development of organisms, right, um, outside of genetic transmission. That's really what it is. Um, and so we see social learning in all sorts of animals, um, even in social insects, surprisingly. There's, there's now evidence for a great deal of social learning where you have innovation spreading because mm. of social learning. And so, you know, the, the phenomenon of culture itself may be fairly widespread, um, but something happened very, you know, different uh, in the history of human evolution. You know, when humans arose, say, you know, in, in erectus forms about 1.6, 1.8 million years ago, all the way up until very recently, um, you know, humans were producing like the same hand axe with the exact mm -hmm. Same structure, essentially. It was a little bit of um, uh, uh, of a simplification, but essentially the same thing for some five hundred thousand years. Mm -hmm. Like this is incomprehensible because if if any of us just sat around the circle, we would figure out a way to improve something, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to understand how human beings were fully anatomically human, essentially indistinguishable. Their brains were essentially indistinguishable, at least as far as we can tell. Bodies were the same. They lived in these complex social worlds. They may even have been seafaring, right? We think Homo erectus probably was seafaring now. It's incredible. They, they built homes. They, you know, they had extraordinary levels of cooperation. These are, like, these are beings that could seem like they would fit just fine in our, in our modern world. And yet, we spent you know, well over a million years relatively unchanged. And it wasn't until about you know, 60, 60,000 years ago or so that culture really took off. And there's no noticeable uh, morphological reason why that would have occurred. And, and that's why the, the big mystery is like, you know, what you'd want to reach for are things like, well, we evolved language. Well, we evolved metacognition, the ability to reflect on our mental states or some kind of self-awareness that didn't exist or symbolism, right? Or, or some, you know, or, and, and you can just give a whole list of things that you think mental time travel and all the things that you think might be relevant to, to developing a cumulative culture. But the, the bizarre thing is that the vast majority of things were almost certainly present for a million years. So why at that time did culture suddenly take off, right? And that's a separate question from why 60,000 years later did a scientific mm -hmm. epistemology emerge, right? So there's a lot of room for pretty radical sorts of contingencies in the process. When you see these massive lags, like evolutionary lags between the origins of a whole bunch of traits and then some kind of transition to a new, 
that suggests that there might have been like these deeply uh, historical factors in play that are unlikely to be replicated again. What, what might be some examples of that? Can you simulate? Of like what might have caused? Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, I think that is the parlor game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people will say larger populations, people you know that were able to retain innovations better, and like. But you know, like what's going to end up happening is you're going to get larger populations, but without you know the cumulative cultural capacity. There are these like robustly scaffolded learning environments that we like everything we have in our world is the result of massive levels of intergenerational collaboration, of right? right? right. And I, to some extent, that was true of hunter gatherers. I mean, you know, hunter gatherers don't have you know early humans are lacking many of the basic sensory capacities that you need to get around and knowledge to get around in your world. You don't know what to eat. You don't know which animals to hunt. Yeah. You don't know any of this, right? And we have to learn everything from scratch, everything. We rely on it. If, if you ever saw the, um, uh, the movie Into the Wild, the, you know, this was an individual that went into Alaska in a, in, and lived in a bus and tried yeah. to live without civilization, but ended up having to use this manual to see what plants yeah. they could eat and then eventually died because they got poisoned, right? So we don't have capacities to survive. We need cultural transmission. And yet we had that for so long and we're doing so well and yet we never had this sort of cumulative moment of cumulativity until very recently in history. And again, you know, the scientific sort of developments post enlightenment are also, there's another, there's another massive gap between cumulative culture and, uh, and the origins of, of scientific uh, practices and epistemologies. And so, you know- and once you have that, you have the, uh, an exponential explosion. You, we may very well have that, yeah.